Chief Ayak, could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Yeah, we have, we'd like to have you stand for a moment of silence. Um, for Bill O'Brien, that's on the zoning, the, um, yeah, zoning board. His wife Judy passed away today. Yeah. And Dr. Garin died on February first. Okay. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for February 11th, 2019. First, we have a public hearing, RSA 67440A, the exception, the acceptance of the Litchfield Drive. So, yes, Mr. Chairman, this is a, a road that was laid out uh, on a planning board approved plan. Uh, it, it is a road that is off of Juniper Lane. Uh, it utilized, uh, in part, a, a lot in a prior subdivision that had a protective covenant on it. And so uh, there has been some court proceeding to make sure that the protective covenant has not been uh, violated by virtue of utilizing a portion of the road for a portion of that lot for a road rather than for a residential lot. And so uh, between the time that it took that to occur and also the time it took to uh, um, actually get an amended subdivision plan uh, because some of the monuments were moved on the original uh, approval, uh, this has taken a bit of time to get here. But now I, my understanding from Public Works is that the road is, in fact, ready for acceptance. And so uh, if the board uh, moves to accept the road uh, and also to uh, the usual practices to reduce the original road bond to 10% of the original amount, uh, which would reduce the amount currently held from, from $24,400.82 uh, to $9,200.60 and to return the bond amount to uh, the difference to the developer. And that 10% uh, amount is held for a one year period. Any questions from the audience? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Mary Louise. Yes, this is the little um, vegetative area. Right? I know. This is a different one than that. Uh, this, this is uh, this is Litchfield Drive, Litchfield that, we, Drive. that we put in off. I have a copy of the plan oh. if you're oh, well, interested. Okay. I think that's the one. It's off Juniper. Let me it's off Juniper. It's where the... Uh, they had gone through, previously gone through a, a lot, sorry, and they uh, they had to get the release from all of the butters before it could be accepted. Juniper Lane. Down near Huckleberry. You're, you're, you're in the yeah, right area. okay. I'm thinking of, all right. It was, it's just a different piece of Huckleberry. Okay. <laughs> a lot of pieces of Huckleberry. Okay, thank you. Any I just questions? want to make sure um, I, Virginia? oops, you want to? Rick, no, no, no. any questions? Oh, I just want to make sure so, that I know what we're doing. Okay. Where this is a public hearing, do we, the public, the public has any questions? Yeah. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. I'll make a motion. I hereby move to accept the Litchfield Drive as built as a town road as shown on the plan approved by the planning board and titles roadway as built plan tax map. map. 96 lots 2E and 2F and tax map 97 lot 1 10 Litchfield Drive, Hampton, New Hampshire, Jazz, Jazzen, Inc., 33 Hobbs Road, Northampton, New Hampshire, 03862, prepared by Jones and Beach, Inc., dated November 5th, 2015, and revised through November 10th, 2016. And two, to accept the warranty deed for said Litchfield Drive, and to three, reduce the road bond being held to 10% of the original amount of $92,006 or $920.60 to be held for one year from the amount currently being held, 
$24,482 and to return the difference of $15,222 to the developer. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Three. Mary Louise, are you in favor of this motion? Four zero unanimous. So one thing while we're talking on this, I want to make sure that uh, with the town manager that uh, this road has been named after Fire Inspector Brian Litchfield, who yes. uh, passed yes. away while he was on duty. Uh, the and commemoration will be made. And the comm commemor commemoration <laughs> memorial will be made. And when we have that, uh, it would probably be appropriate to have the fire department and. Uh, Cindy Litchfield and her family there we'll to do a, that. So yeah. we'll have a groundbreaking, so to speak. Okay, very good. So we have a motion and a second. All those, oh, sorry, it was already in favor. Unanimous. I, just to quit, is this the one and only public hearing that we need? Yes, it's yes. the one and only public hearing we need okay. for that. So now it's a public comment period. Wait a so minute, son. Okay, so we already, we I voted. Yeah, yes it was, it was well. unanimous. Yeah. So yes. Good evening, we're Judy and Bob Holder. We're from 72 Island Path, which is just uh, west of Brown. Yep. Uh, we've owned the home for about 17 years. First 10 or 12 years we owned the home, it was pretty uneventful from a flood standpoint. <laughs> the last several years have been pretty extreme. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, for instance, we had uh, seven flood events. Within we're, the uh, home. And so far in 2019, we've had one already in January. Mm -hmm. So. Our goal, or what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. is to work with FEMA and to work with the town uh, to try and utilize available grants that are available on a state basis. Everybody we've talked to so far, uh, whether it's from FEMA, the agents that we talked to, or people in the state. For uh, the mitigation, Whitney everything Welch. Everything seems to start with the town. Whether it's we need your help to uh, fill out forms to apply for grants for in Concord, or we need the flood uh, plain coordinator to provide information to FEMA. Uh, we are ready, willing, and able, and we've got all the information. You know, being living here for 17 years and going through all these floods, we've got plenty of details. We can document our losses. And um, uh, we're hoping to get the town's help mm -hmm. to go after whatever monies are available. I mean, right. Okay. Right. But as I explained to you before, this is a, a, just a comment period, right. and, mm -hmm. and we had that. Uh, I know we have been working on this with the conservation and stuff, so we will uh, we'll take this under advisement. We will. Uh, um, we, it, it's going to come back here within probably a couple of meetings because we we've had other people discussing it too. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. I would say look at our agendas and, and see what it is. But we're going to work at it and and uh, do what we can. So. I would like to ask the town manager something. Okay, sir. Sure. Um, now, I, from, the, from what I understand, it's, it's been said that it's like 75% from FEMA and 25%. Is the money from the 25%, is that supposed to be from the town or could it be from the, the people themselves? It can be from anybody, but the town does not have an appropriation, so I wouldn't be able to expend those funds. And that funds. would have to go to the town meeting? That's mm -hmm. correct. Yeah, but it, it is possible that uh, this could be done um, mm -hmm. and the people themselves would be responsible for the 25%. If it we were done on this calendar year or, or there could be another match grant for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. because um, to me this is, sounds very mm -hmm. similar to what we've done here for years uh, with uh, making applications for businesses. For instance, mm -hmm. the brewery that's out on uh, right. Mary Bachelor Road, mm -hmm. um, you know, the town did all of that. They applied for the grant and the town, I believe, wasn't responsible for anything. That's correct. Yeah, because to me, <coughs> excuse me, to me, it seems like, you know, where the town has 1,000 flood uh, policies, uh, the highest in the state of New Hampshire, that, and it could be rising to, you know, and they, FEMA is even recommending that these flood uh, things be expanded into the town itself for, uh, in case the sewers back up and stuff like that or the drains, um, that we have, you know, a lot of property at risk here, 
And if this property is devalued, uh, which according to many of the articles that have been, I have two articles that I, that one from the Hampton Union, yeah. and I have another one from business, New Hampshire Business Journal, mm -hmm. That some of them estimate that um, Hampton has had as much as $15 million devaluation to the properties at the owner's expense. And if the property is going down that fast at this time, we uh, are losing future tax revenue that will go on in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So I think this is something that has to be addressed. Yeah. Absolutely. No question. Yeah. Go ahead. And, and like I said, usually we don't have a back and forth. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why we're not answering any questions, yeah. but we'll at least let the board yeah. talk about it a little bit. Yeah. So, it's a sure. unique situation yes. at, at this time. Is this your permanent residence? Yes, it yes. is. It's it, not a second home, summer no, home. No, it was before, well, but it's our permanent it residence. Was. Right, but at this point in time, this is your permanent. Correct. All the kids left, we came to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ah. And the home just sits a little bit above the ground, the first level. And um, last year we flooded seven times. We lost our, our furnace, um, the, uh, everything. The refrigerator fried, because um, we have the kitchen in the lower level as well. The washer, you name it. I um, thought we weren't going to have a back and forth. Well, yeah, I know, not. but anyway, so, I just right. wanted to explain it. Everybody yeah. else had a chance. Yeah. 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 Well, this, we'll speak here at the table. Sure. I'm gonna talk to them, thank you. Well, right, um, that's what we just said wasn't going so to happen. So I wanted to ask you, so how long have you lived down there full time? Oh. Full time, six years. Six years, mm -hmm. and have you noticed, like the past few years, have they gotten progressively worse? Oh, yes. Besides because I know it's always flooded yes. down there, you're on island path. Right, yeah. yeah. The you know, tides are getting higher. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it's very common uh, in the middle of the you know, high tide mm -hmm. to have tides of 10, 4, 10, 5, 10, 6 inches. Mm -hmm. If we have tides that high and there's a storm out at sea, it's flooding. It's not a, yes. not a matter of maybe. It will flood. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I agree yeah. with you. But I'm not ready to. We have to leave the property at times completely, Take, make, get the cars out of there and just leave. And you're looking to get some that. type of, obviously, financial to, support you, from. I right. think what they're looking at is for a letter of intent. Isn't a letter of intent to, I want to start with. Um, We're looking with, for um, help with FEMA. Whitney right. Welch, the mitigation for uh, 75 to 25 percent cost, 75 from the state and 25 percent from us. I, yeah, that I mean, would be the best. She, she would help and make decisions on that. It has to be applied through from the town. Right. 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 Well, right. I'm on, I'm the Board of Selectmen rep mm -hmm. to the Coastal Hazardous Adaptation Team and we're meeting next week. And there's sure. a lot of professionals that deal with this from both the town and the state. Yeah. So if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to maybe get what you're saying in writing so that we can discuss it at the meeting next absolutely. week. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. We'll right. share Thank our you. information. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. We're going to, it is something that's fresh on our minds and we are going to work on it. So thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public that would like to speak? Seeing none. Announcements and community calendar. Mayor Louise. Yes. Hang on for me for a minute. Um, we have received a letter as a board. Uh, that was a copy of a letter that was directed to uh, Chief Ayotte, and I want to share this with the public. Uh, it says, Dear Chief Ayotte, I wanted to send you this note to give a huge thank you to the Hampton Beach Fire Rescue Team for their help. On Saturday, January 19, I suffered a major heart attack, which came on with no warning. My wife called 911, and a short time later, your staff was on site at my house handling what they were trained to do. Within minutes, they had me out of the house, into the ambulance, and to the Exeter Hospital. Before I knew what was happening, I was in the operating room having a procedure to place a stent in my heart to relieve a 100% blockage in the main heart artery. After the procedure, the doctor told me I had a 24% chance of survival and called this attack a widow maker, and I only had a 90-minute window to get through this ordeal or I would have been dead. From the time of the call to 911 to the time I was in my ICU room following the procedure was approximately 60 minutes. Incredible. I can't thank your crew enough for their excellent work and for saving my life. I, I appreciate it when the public calls in to thank uh, departments uh, for what they, uh, what they do very well. Comcast. Uh, we got this report, Fred, and it's talking about the, their quarterly uh, franchise fees. 
So I thought the public might want to know um, from October to, through December 2018, the franchise fees came to $85,104.60. So that should cheer somebody up at home. And the unassigned fund balance and the um, budget committee often wrestles with this. The unassigned fund balance as of 1231 was 7,499,477, but the unpaid taxes were 2,000, 2 million, I'm sorry, 2,457,055 dollars. So bills don't always get paid on time. So it's nice to have a fund balance, but it's not always offset by prompt uh, paying of taxes. So I just thought I would refresh your memory on that. And I appreciate that. And my last comment is on the uh, <laughs> dredging of the Hampton Harbor, which we're all looking forward to sometime this year. And that should lower some of the flooding problems down there because the water is so high because of all those, uh, all the sand that's been put in the river. So that might ease a little bit of the flooding for the residents uh, who have property adjacent to the river. Thank you. That's it. Regina? Okay. Yeah, you brought up one thing that I was going to bring up later. I was just wondering if, well, obviously not tonight, but if we could futuristically perhaps talk about Comcast, because as far as who's paying for what, looking at this, um, I just have questions, and I would want to talk about it when we have a Mm -hmm. Jim okay. So if we could uh, think about that in the future. And I just had a Navy committee meeting upstairs. Went really, really well. We were talking. A lot of people have different ideas. So hopefully we can get some of these new ideas to work, get some more people involved. And also I had a question because we do have a warrant article for the money to put some, for the town to put some money aside so that we can, you know, maybe help out to offset some of these costs that we can do with it. What it is is the Navy Yard that's here for the next two years. They're on the USS Virginia Navy ship. So we're trying to arrange some activities where they can help <coughs> us out and we can help them out by getting them off the base a little bit. So we're hoping to get that information more out to the public soon. So I did have a question about how the Navy Fund's name was different than what the committee's name is, but that's okay. So I think right now we're moving forward and we're looking for some good ideas. And if anyone has them, Please let us know. Thank you. Perk. Yeah. Thank you. The only thing, uh, it, the, this Navy committee is actually a very good group, and there's a good group of people that are doing it. Yeah. Right. And and the Warren article <coughs> that is out there is so that we can invite them down and maybe have some cookouts, uh, have some activities for them to be at. There was some concern at the uh, deliberative session about people going out to solicit funds right and, and going out uh, on on uh, trips to visit the ship and stuff like that and that's not what this money's intent to do it's meant to stay right here in town work with these sailors and uh, Marines that are on that that ship and to uh, uh, show them the hospitality that we feel they should be have so right. there's, there's a drawback to that though mr. chairman we now have two submarine crews who love the town of Hampton, so we may end up with the third submarine crew a year or two down the road. I think that, it's going to multiply. A, that's a bad problem to have, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, we were asked by, by the uh, Portsmouth Naval Shipyard if we would take over the Virginia uh, because, quite frankly, they did hear how well the town uh, interacted when the USS Hampton was here and how appreciative the sailors on the USS Hampton were. So uh, it's kind of special that actually, you know, that they thought enough that we did enough for them that they wanted us to do another ship, so. Alrighty, I need the approval of the minutes for January 8th, public session. Mr. Chairman, I will so move. Second. Rick, all those in favor? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I will move the public session and non-public session minutes of January 28, 2019. Very good. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. The next thing is a consent agenda. We have some 2019 elderly credits. We have 2019 veteran credits. We have a uh, NOAA Chesenia. 
Eagle Scout donation to the town forest fund of $938.91. We have a parade and public gathering license. And that's it. Mr. Chairman, I have a quick question. Yes. On, uh, young uh, Noah Teresina, uh, are we sending him a letter of thanks or a any acknowledgement? What a nice young man. And what a a job absolutely a did. nice thing. And I, I would hope that the Conservation Commission, where that money's going to them, would do so, and I would encourage them to do mm -hmm. so. So I need a motion to accept the consent agenda. I'll make that motion. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next we have is appointments. Jamison Ayotte, Fire Chief, Departmental Update. Oh, more paperwork. More paperwork. Uh, thanks, Chief. <laughs> I did that for you, sir. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Waddell's not here, so. Thank you. That's a letter from them. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> okay. Who's that? <clears throat> well, Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Tonight I'll summarize 2018 and let you know what the department has been doing in the first days of 2019. Hampton Fire Rescue is experiencing some transitions. On February 1st, 2019, Deputy Kennedy began his new life as a retiree. We wish him well in his future endeavors. On January 3rd, 2019, <coughs> excuse me, firefighter Ryan Pitts left Hampton Fire Rescue to return home to the Pelham Fire Department. We wish him success as he moves along in both his fire and Navy careers. We're working to fill both vacancies. We have posted the open firefighter position and received a number of resumes and have scheduled oral boards for February 19th. The practical stations will follow on that Thursday, which I believe is the 21st. We'll work to find the best candidate to become a Hampton firefighter and I hope to come before you soon for a proper swearing in process. Mr. Welch and Jamie Sullivan are working to fill the uh, working on the deputy chief examination process, and I look forward to filling, uh, seeing that position filled soon. As you may recall, we had a somewhat light summer, reflected by a nine percent decrease in the overall year-over-year -year call volume. The gap narrowed significantly as the year progressed. The 2018 call volume is within two percent of 2017. Once again, based on the parallel comparison how summer season affected other local businesses, I believe that this demonstrates a relative increase in calls for service for our community. Despite the difference seen in the summer, which was due to numerous factors, we saw that throughout the year our call volume equalized. Hampton, as a community, continues to be a busy place to work and live. Uh, Hampton Fire Rescue answered 4,326 calls in 2018. The breakdown is as follows, 2,117 calls for fire and 2,209 patient contacts. For fire, there were 45 uh, fire or explosion related incidents in 2018. These are, that designation is given by Envers, just so that everybody understands we didn't have major explosions similar to our sister communities, which we'll talk about in a minute. We responded to 24 structure fires in town. That represents an increase of 20% for structure fires. We began this year by responding to a fire in Seabrook on New Year's Day during a heavy snowstorm. Tragically, this fire resulted in a fatality for one of the occupants. We also responded in Hampton Falls, Exeter, Kensington, uh, all in that same week. The winter weather hit hard and a number of storms caused major flooding which required the fire department to respond to rescue several motorists and homeowners. Engine 4 sustained significant damage as a result to exposure to salt water flooded streets. It was sent back to Wisconsin for repairs. Later in the month we responded to a fire on Johnson Ave that displaced two families. In February we responded to a fire at the Emerald Isle Motel and a multiple alarm fire in Greenland. March came roaring in with heavy winter storms and another structure fire on Driftwood Road which occurred during one of three nor'easters that month. On March 20th, we responded to a fire at Crossway Terrace in which an occupant suffered severe burns and was treated by the, by the responding firefighters. Northampton Ambulance transported the patient to the hospital. The most significant fire occurred on April 5th at the Seawalk Apartments on the corner of C Street and Ashworth Ave. It was a wind-driven fire that went to three alarms, with the first Duke company uh, performing a rescue over ladders and the resident had fled the building and jumped to the adjacent laundromat roof. The occupants sustained minor injuries. In May, we responded to Seabrook and Amesbury for structure fires. In June, saw a mutual aid call to Dover for a multiple alarm fire and two fires here in Hampton on the same weekend, one at the Sands Resort and one at the Beachside Inn Condo Association. In the middle of the month, we responded to Exeter for a structure fire. In July, Ladder 1 and C1 responded to Portsmouth for a multiple alarm fire in a large garage converted into a storage facility. Crews responded to a fire on Mill Road in August. 
and in September, crews responded to West Ridge Drive for a reported lawnmower fire. Upon arrival, it was found that a full five-gallon can was burning and the landscaper had been significantly burned trying to extinguish the commercial equipment. That same day, September 13th, Engine 1, Ladder 1, and C1 responded to Lawrence Mass as part of a large-scale mutual aid response to fires and explosions caused by overpressure in the gas service. The ambulance was requested the following day and performed several EMS calls in the city before returning to Hampton. In October, Engine 4 returned to service and within a week was used to help fight a fire at Foss Manufacturing. November saw a mutual aid response to the structure fire in Seabrook and December saw another fire at Foss Manufacturing in a separate part of the building and due to a different cause. The first fire went to a first alarm and the second fire at Foss went to a second. On January 5th, 2019, we responded to Rings Island in Salisbury for a four alarm fire. We responded to Rye for a structure fire on January 11th, and on the 14th, we responded to Newburyport to assist in a four alarm fire in their town. On the 31st, we again responded to Rye for a structure fire. It may sound like we do a great deal of time responding to mutual aid fires last year, and we did. However, we received mutual aid 35 times and responded to other communities 18 times. This means that we requested mutual aid two times more than we provided it. There's little doubt that our community is the busiest in the area. So far this year, we have answered over 220 calls, given mutual aid four times for fires, 10 times for ambulance. We have requested mutual aid 13 times with only one fire on Kings Highway. From fire to ice, ice rescue training is taking place this week. Last week, the fundamentals were delivered in the classroom, and this week, the practical evolutions will be taking place on the ice. Crews are at Liberty Lane with the appropriate permissions, and we have five members trained as trainers last year that are bringing the education to the members of the department. For emergency medical services, we had a total of 2,209 patient contacts in 2018. There were 1,471 patient transports. <coughs> I'm extremely proud to report to you again that Hampton Fire Rescue was the recipient of the Portsmouth Regional Hospital's Emergency Medicine EMS Agency of the Year for 2018. This is directly attributable to the professionalism and the skill of the providers, and we thank you very much for reading that letter, ma'am. That's one of the cases that uh, indicated. They continue to do a great job providing emergency medical care, medical care to all those in need. As a result of stat or, uh, for statistics, um, of the 2018 calls for service, 44 were for overdose. There has been one overdose in 2019. Hampton Fire Rescue administered Narcan 44 times in 2018, which included several patients that required multiple doses. Opiates remain a great uh, concern. We responded to five STEMIs last year, or ST elevation MIs, 34 patients having stroke, 50 chest pain calls, 19 cardiac arrests, and 400 trauma patients. Falls are the main cause of trauma and are the number one reason for EMS dispatch, outnumbering the next highest call for service, MVAs, by two to one. In 2019, we have seen one STEMI, two patients experiencing stroke, two with chest pain, one cardiac arrest, and 33 with various causes of trauma. Mm -hmm. We're exceptionally pleased to report that more than 500 people were trained in cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR, in 2018. We also trained over 200 people in the National Stop the Bleed program aimed at treating trauma patients, and we continue to provide this valuable training to the community. We continue to upgrade our service and technology brought directly to the patients. With your help, we acquired new IV pumps, a new ambulance, a new power load system, three auto, uh, Zoll Auto Pulse CPR adjunct devices, and all are in service today. For fire prevention, the Fire Prevention Bureau performed 325 inspections issued 191 permits and collected $7,198.50. The table provided shows year-over-year -year changes. One thing that you will notice is that there's a significantly decreased amount in the fees this year. That's because in 2015, 2016, 2017, we saw very large-scale projects coming in, which is the upfront load for us, whereas in the building department, they are collecting fees on the smaller buildings. We're not. We're doing the inspections for the larger buildings and for um, the, the re-inspections each year. In January, the Fire Prevention Bureau conducted 16 inspections and issued 13 permits and collected $1,044.05 in fees. Based on the construction plans in the pipeline, we expect to be busy with several inspections as new construction is planned throughout the community. There were 14 display fireworks inspections in 2018, including New Year's Eve. Local hotels and motels continue to partner with Hampton Fire in conducting life safety inspections and making sure that their systems are inspected and functioning. During Fire Prevention Week in October, the Fire Prevention Bureau brought a message of safety in the home to an unprecedented 713 students from local schools and several homeschooled students. 
The penguin plunge last week went off without a hitch. The weather, on the other hand, has caused numerous problems with sprinkler systems. Frozen pipes result in cracks and leaks. The systems, at least in certain zones, need to be shut down for repairs, which caused some buildings that were designed to have a sprinkler system in place to now be without. We respond to system failures, log the occurrences, monitor the progress, and the fire prevention office works with building owners and contractors to get the systems back up and running and inspected. At this time, five sprinkler systems remain either shut down or only partially in service as repairs need to be made before restoring the systems. The fire prevention officer will be inspecting each one as it comes back online. For communications, Hampton Fire Alarm answered 22,902 calls in 2018. This translates to an average of 63 calls a day. This is an average, which accounts for but cannot describe the, ways, the days that they answered over 200 calls as seen during some of the storms. There were 1,716 phone calls to Hampton Fire Alarm in January of 2019. For administration, in September, Hampton Fire Rescue was awarded the FEMA Assistance to Firefighters Grant for the replacement of obsolete radio equipment and pagers. The total received will be $79,444. The pagers have been purchased and distributed. The radios have been ordered and will be installed upon delivery. I have submitted another assistance to Firefighters Grant totaling $172,102, which will have a federal share of $163,907 and a town share of $8,195. This grant, if awarded, will be used to replace 40 portable radios that are obsolete and frequently require service. Parts are no longer available and it takes several months for the radios to return. These are our primary source of communication on all emergency scenes and are vital to our, our operations. As an aside, on February 24th, I will be heading to the National Fire Academy in Emmitsburg, Maryland, as part of the peer review process for the FY 2018 AFG grants. As a member of the review panel, I will have a unique opportunity to review grants from around the country. Just as our grants need to be reviewed by peer agency representatives, so do all other grants. In addition to the honor of serving on this panel, I feel it will be a tremendous learning opportunity, er, opportunity to aid us in the development of future grants. The new software, Red NMX, is completing the data conversion, and with the help of the IT town, uh, the town IT department, we've installed the program as a trial demo that will allow us to become familiar with the program. Formal training will begin soon, and we hope to deploy the program during the summer. We've been very fortunate to have the town manager and this board support the effort to abstain, uh, obtain staffing for fire and emergency response, or a SAFER grant. We are a growing community, and the need for resources to be available to answer the call for services is essential. I humbly ask for the, customer, uh, the community's support to apply for the SAFER grant and look forward to moving the department forward so that we can continue to provide the best service possible to the citizens and visitors of this town. Thank you very much for your consideration, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Chief. Mary Louise. First of all, I really appreciate your quarterly reports. Very detailed, very specific. Will you kindly... Uh, do me a courtesy once again and forward a, an email of your report to the Budget Committee. Yes, ma'am. I want to see that ongoing because sure. they need to know what you're doing. On the grants. Yes, ma'am. Um, how pushy can we be to get, to get the grants? If you get a grant for the new firefighter positions, do you have a feel for the timing? I don't. Uh, as a matter of fact, what I can tell you is that by way of checking and, and I did not receive an email, I didn't receive a phone call from FEMA or anything today, but I checked on the FEMA website and noticed that the notice of funding opportunity is out today. Oh, okay. I don't know if it came out today or Friday, but it is now published and it lets us know that the SAFER grant opens this Friday, February 15th, and it closes I believe March 22nd. So we're going to jump. Well, that's that's the goal and it'll be up to the, to the um, town people to say yes to go for it. I'm still going to do the work yeah. and we'll be ready to go and pull the trigger if necessary. Um, the funding opportunity is for three years, so that will start as soon as they say yes and we get awarded. And there's no guarantee on the awards. Right now what FEMA is, is indicating is that they anticipate there will be 300 awards. So I believe they have $350 million to expend. Because I enjoyed standing outside the fire station when they had that nice big check. Uh, that was not so bad. So we want, we want a few more. Um, you mentioned Narcan and, and some overdoses. With all, with surrounding states going through all this cannabis shops and stuff, do you anticipate, are you getting any feedback from um, the uh, state representatives or any rumblings to that effect going on in New Hampshire? 
As far as cannabis goes, yeah. no, I haven't heard too <laughs> much about that. Or... No, and it's a different drug entirely. So, okay. um, so you don't worry as much about overdoses on that. I've been in EMS since 1994, and the only time I've ever had to have a call for somebody who had a cannabis issue was because they were freaking out, and that was it. <laughs> that was one call in 20 years. So I haven't seen our 25 years. But the opiate overdose, that's that's something that they can't control once they overdose on that. That's right. a big problem. And so I anticipate that to continue to be a problem. As far as the um, the other controlled substances, I don't know what that will do to us as a state. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know where they are as far as legalization when it comes to um, having shops. It's just you, you kind of wonder. And I'll be very brief. I've just got a couple more points. You have the two open positions now. I'm going to ask you what I'm going to be asking any other department head. This is not just directed at you. But uh, when you are screening the applicants uh, and when you get down to the number you think you want, will we be doing a criminal record check prior to hire? That's certainly part of every hire that we do. Okay. And it's necessary because we're, uh, you know, firefighters are entering people's homes. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we're getting the best possible okay. candidate. Yeah, I just want to be reassured, yep. I guess. And, um, Seabrook, and I'm on the bridge committee, and it does, look, you were at the meeting in Seabrook to see the nice new plans, and it looks very hopeful for the town to have a nice replacement bridge. Were you impressed with the? I, I uh, wasn't at that meeting, ma'am. I thought no. I saw you down there. Well, it was very good anyway, and there's very good response. So the uh, bridge that uh, plan that they have now shows on the western end of the river Wonderful. and it looks very very good so I'm hopeful that for you and your department there's only one caveat though they're showing only a two lane so you might want to question or I will the next meeting I will question in your behalf about emergency service vehicles being able to get as far as bridge. I know the discussion still remains between uh, whether or not it will be a drawbridge or if it'll be no, stay, the, right? I think the bascule has been okay. shot up but if but I, if you have uh, concerns about a two-lane bridge. It's got sidewalks on each side, but a two-lane bridge trying to get emergency vehicles across, especially in the summer, that occurred to me, and I will ask that question then and let you know okay. what's coming on. And thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Chief, for the report. Yes, ma'am. And um, I can't find it in here right now, but you said that pretty much we receive mutual aid about twice as much. Mm -hmm. As we last year in 2018 we received it 35 times and we issued it out uh, 18 so that's two to one uh, this year we're about even but that's also incorporating a lot of the EMS calls last year's EMS runs in it's very difficult the the software setup that we have right now it's difficult to tell how many times EMS came in it would right. blow those numbers out of the water I know that we had five mutual aid ambulance calls in the last week of the year so there's a there's a lot more EMS coming in but it's hard to develop those numbers without reviewing every call. Because you I, say 1,471 patient transports, so is that? That we did. That you did. That so Hampton Fire did. Plus whatever they, else there is. Yes, absolutely. So there's no season for the fire department here in Hampton. There's no season anymore, <laughs> absolutely correct. I would say that uh, we're working 12 months out of the year. And we continue to grow, and again, like a lot of departments, we have it invested into the fire department. So the SAFER grant, is supported by the board, is supported by the town management, supported by the budget committee, and it's a warrant article. So when That's you true. look at that, you know, just what we're talking about is applicable, and you just have to vote on March what you'd like to do. So thank you for your report. Thank you, ma'am. Rick? No, good report. Thank, thank you. you, sir. No, I think uh, you're absolutely right. And can you, can you give me an average cost of what it costs or what the town loses in revenue when we have an ambulance from out of town that transports a patient? Certainly. So there's, there's varying levels of billing. And the way it works for BLS and ALS, um, we, we tend to bill uh, $1,079 for ALS. Uh, generally, that's, that's a little under the industry standard. There are some communities that are charging significantly more. But at the end of the day, if that bill's not paid, then there's a condition where there might be more of a write-off. So there's a problem there. If we look at the communities that come into us, and if they're billing the same that we are, any ALS runs that are going transporting to the hospital, that's $1,079 plus mileage. And you know that, that varies depending on where you go. And so when we have an out-of-town ambulance come in, 
we don't collect that fee. We do not. They, they collect that fee. That's so correct. You, there's, there's a potential loss in revenue there. And I, I think it's important that, pe one, people know that, but two, the SAFER grant will, will allow us to have four firefighters. Now, that's not four firefighters additional per shift. That's one firefighter per shift. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that will bring the, the staffing up to normal of 10. Correct. So, uh, and by doing that, it, it's going to help your department out immensely. Couldn't and hopefully it will help decrease some of these no, number of times that we need an outside ambulance. Yeah. And I thank you very much, too, for supporting, too, at the deliberative session. You had mentioned that. Uh, you know, with, with the national standards that are out there, SAFER is looking to get municipalities to come up to a national standard mm -hmm. for firefighting. Mm -hmm. Their national standard is four firefighters per engine. Even yes. with the SAFER grant, yes. we will not achieve that. Yeah. I want people to understand that, but it's getting there. And it, it takes a long time to do these things, but we're trying stepwise. Okay. Sir, uh, you also brought up tonight Brian Litchfield. Yes. And I want to say thank you very much. And whatever the town decides to do, the, the, the fire department more than supports that. And I can't wait for that day when we can celebrate. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Having uh, worked with Brian for a number of years, <laughs> I, I can appreciate that. Yes. Uh, just a quick follow-up because you, you get me thinking, you see, when you come in here. I tried slipping you a note at the deliberative session because there was one thing you had told me that I forgot to mention in my remarks on uh, adding the uh, firefighters and the contamination. Uh, when you took me into the uh, laundry room, sure. you mentioned to me that the clothing, the turnout gear that you're putting in the washing machine is so contaminated that that wastewater can't go into the town water system. It has a separate discharge. The extractor does. So yes. that washing machine does go to the town. Okay. Oh, okay. The shower, that was, if you remember, I showed you there was a manual shower yeah. that was behind it. That's for contamination with uh, kerosene, oil, diesel, oh, okay. and that goes to a separate holding tank. Right. And we have a thousand gallon holding that, chamber at each fire yeah. station for the same purpose. Right. That's what it, yep. I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Well, yes, I, while you brought up Warren articles and stuff, we do have the one Warren mm -hmm. article for the, uh, for the gear. And that is so important that we support that as a community. Uh, so we have. Um, and, and you brought it up for the for the for the firefighters so they can have that second set of gear and uh, I hope everybody looks at that and I do as I said at the time I've buried too many friends agreed well the year cancer I, I hope we can uh, the firefighter can Mills that. was a very nice gentleman to bring in his <laughs> his gear <laughs> all right Chief. thank you thank you very much have a great night now you got three months to recover. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Next one we have is Ed Tinker from MIS Contract Assessor. Good evening. Good evening, Ed. How are you? Good. How are you? Very good. Nice to see everybody. Um, here tonight for a few items. Um, our yearly um, land rent commitment. Um, just wanted to go over that with the board. Um, uh, the 2019 town owned land rent commitment. Um, the amount uh, to be collected is $164,928. Um, it relates to the 2018 assessed value of 31 parcels of town-owned lease land. We have a total of 32. One, though, is still not taxed based on the old lease agreement, which expires in 2020. However, the 31 <clears throat> and that amount that I mentioned is relative to an assessed value of $8,246,400. So it's a 2% land rent that's uh, a yearly land, land rent that's um, the commitment relates to. If you have any questions about that, I can Any questions those. on the land rent <laughs> commitment? Seeing none, do we need a motion? A motion to approve. The motion commitment. to approve the commitment? Yes. I'll make that motion. Motion by Rick. Second. Second by Mary, uh, Regina, sorry. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Yep. Um, additionally, I have some um, land lease renewals and um, actually the first thing is a termination and new land lease relative to 23 B Street, map 282-207. Um, additionally, we have four uh, renewals for land lease, the 2019 renewals. Uh, those are 14 G Street, 9 J Street, 28 to 30 K Street, and 17 Ocean Boulevard. And I can answer any questions you have. Any questions on these? I just have a question on the termination, and then yes. we just are we just renewing it? Is it the same terms? And um, it's actually a, a, a new party is uh, buying the building from 
the current owner of the oh, building. Okay. And in order to be able to uh, have their building there, they need a, a new lease in the new building owner's name. The, okay. the lease uh, runs from April 1 of a given year to March 31 of the next year, okay. so that any time that uh, there is a change in the building owner and a new lease in the middle of a year, it reverts back to the prior April 1. And so that's what you have here. All right, perfect. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. So I'm going to need a motion for um, the termination and the land re lease renewal. I'll make that motion. For uh, 23B Street. I have a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Then do I need a motion for the four land lease renewals? Yes. Yes. For the, for the what? For land lease renewals. The land lease renewals. Thank you. So, I'll uh, second, Rick. Rick, all those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, do we, oh, we yeah, have questions it? on Ed's letter or? On his, on. The February 8th assessing pickups? No, that's not. That wasn't oh, it was two. I'm sorry. It was two. Um, Ed. Okay. From, from Mr. Welch. All right. So the next one is Chris McFerrin, 15 High Street, looking for permission for an overhang sign on a public way. Good evening, Chris. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Very good. You're here for a sign that's hanging over, I believe, the sidewalk. Yes. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Similar to the way Zestos has theirs, right. and I believe there's a number of those restaurants in that area that have those. Yes. yes. So, are there any questions from the board? Um, is, I would like to know. So, what is the CBD store? So it's cannabinoid oil. So it's the derived from the hemp plant. It's no THC, and so there's no psychotropic. Um, Holler a little effects. louder. <laughs> no, you don't have to get too close. Just just give the volume a little bit so we can understand you. So there's it's CBD oil is it's an oil that comes from industrial hemp. It's extracted from the plant. There's no THC in any of the product, so no psychotropic effects for it. And it's proven there's been a lot of studies that show it. You get the same pain relief, uh, helps with anxiety and depression, that you would get from marijuana, but without you know in inhaling it or getting THC in it. Hmm. Yes. They actually, I think they sell this oil already down at the natural food store. They do. Right on mm -hmm. Yeah, right. so yes. it's something that is, I it's mean, you can done. pretty much buy it everywhere now, Correct. I think. You can. Yeah, so. So, so what he's basically looking for is I'll a. I'll make the motion. Okay, a motion by Rick. To, I'll know, second it. Second it by Regina to allow the overhanging sign. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank there you. you go. Thank you. Town Manager's Report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, with the exception of the connections to the Church Street pumping station, that is to the new lines, the installation of the bridge across Tide Mill Creek and the transfer of the sewer connections for buildings on Tide Mill Road and the final cleanup, the new force main has been installed along Route 101. So we have cleanup to do in the spring and these other things to do as soon as the bridge is put in and everything is connected. Individuals who are eligible to file for tax credits and exemptions for blind elderly veterans are reminded that exemptions and re with required paper paperwork must be filed by April 15th. Those property owners in, ha in the Hampton Beach precinct who desire to be exempted from the payment of the portion of a district tax devoted to entertainment must file the required paperwork for the assessing department by April 15th. The last day to file for tax abatements and deferrals for 2018 property taxes is March 1st. The annual town election will be held on Tuesday, March 12th. Voting will be at Winnicott High School. The warrants uh, are on the town website. We also have some available for handout in the, uh, in the front of the town office. And the warrants are posted at the school and the post office and the library for those who wish to review them in addition mm -hmm. to the town, town office. Now, Mr. Chairman, there's going to be a government to government meeting. That is to say it's for the towns involved in the um, area covered by the nuclear power plant. And it's going to be held from 1 to 3 p.m. on February 13th. 
at the Best Western Plus, the Inn in Hampton, 5815 Lafayette Road, Hampton. The uh, Nuclear Power uh, Regulatory Commission is going to also file for a, uh, a session with the public, which we have not received as of yet. The transfer station uh, and trash collection will not occur on Monday, February 18th. Uh, that is a legal holiday and our employees will be off. Move everything up one day. Uh, Thursday and Friday will be collected on Friday. And that, sir, I believe is it for tonight. Any questions from the town manager on his report? Mary Louise. Um, I, I, oops, I have a request for the manager and I don't know whether you want it under the town manager's report or new business. Did it fall under his report? Well, well we have, yeah, we're having a problem with uh, Ann's Lane area. That, well, why don't we bring it up under old business? Uh, okay. Thank you. Anything under the town manager's report? I'm good under town manager's report. Thank Rick, you. you mentioned about the um, Hampton Beach precinct uh, about people asking to be exempted. When, when are they having their um, deliberative session? I can't tell you. I haven't seen the posting for it yet. And what did you just say at the end? I didn't quite catch it about the uh, garbage pickup. It will not occur next Monday uh, because next Monday is a legal holiday. So everything will move up one day and Thursday and Friday will be collected on Friday. I was, uh, I was glad to hear uh, that the, uh, the force main is ahead of schedule. And, uh, you know, we, we've had a, a cold winter, but we've had a fairly snowless winter. So it's given them the opportunities to work up there. Yeah. Our contract has been very good at getting and progress of the work. Exactly. So it, it was good to hear that. Matter of fact, I had somebody that read the uh, the agenda and sent me an email and said, "Is that true?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is true. Yep. So it is good to see. Um, the town report, the town election you mentioned. When are the town reports going to be available? Do we know? Should be a week before the election by statute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, old business. Mr. Chairman, yes. actually, on the precinct, Rick, um, I believe it's usually the last Friday of March, but I'm going to be going to the meeting on so. Wednesday, so I'll, I'm sure they'll probably talk about it. So mm -hmm. I will uh, make sure that it comes back to the board. Thank you. Mm. All right, under old business, we have RSA 4114A, 36 Huckleberry Lane. Didn't we just yes. do this? No, that that was oh okay. That was for Litchfield Drive. Litchfield not, up in yeah. So uh, we yes. have too many streets. Too many, too much stuff going on in Huckleberry Lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, this one involves a uh, the implementation of a planning board approval for a two lot subdivision. Uh, part of what would have been uh, the full of lot two uh, had the. Uh, piece of Huckleberry Lane run right through it when it was built, even though it wasn't platted that way. And so when this two-lot subdivision came up, it was proposed that the portion of uh, Lot 2 where the uh, road bends through it right. as built uh, be deeded to the town, mm -hmm. so that uh, gifted to the town. So that was the purpose of the, uh, the 4114A proceeding. Uh, mm -hmm. There is also, in connection with that subdivision, a um, because of that road bending through Lot 2, there necessarily had to be a, a, a ed vegetation restriction on Lot 2 itself so that uh, there would not be sightline interference with vegetation so that um, uh, the town is given a backup easement essentially so that uh, that uh, vegetation can be kept low in case the owner does not do it as they're supposed to, so that to, to keep that sight line clear. Mm. And so uh, I have an amended motion. Yep, go ahead. I move to accept and sign. This one here. That's the other one. Oh, yes, I'm yeah. sorry. I move to accept and sign the accept acceptance pages for the gift from Clara N. Arnold, trustee of the CNA Realty Trust. UDT dated 
March 10, 2004, of, a par of parcel A from 36 Huckleberry Lane and the right of access to Lot 2 to enable backup maintenance by the town of the vegetation restriction area Lot 2 in the subdivision approved by the Hampton Planning Board on September 19, 2018, and also to accept and sign acceptance pages as sewer commissioners for the hold harmless and ended Endemification agreement as the use by parcel two of a force main sewer pipe to access the sewer system of the town of Hampton. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any questions? This is the one I was thinking about when with the prior. Right. The streets all mushed together after a while. So we have a motion yeah. and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Next. We have RSA 4114A817 Ocean Boulevard, map 197, lot 31 for the vote. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is the one where uh, Attorney Sari was bringing this to the board's attention because uh, this is a, a lot where there are already two pre-existing dwellings and uh, the problem is that there is a, a deed restriction which was not in the original lease uh, which restricted uh, the only structure permitted to be erected upon the lot would be one single family dwelling. Mm -hmm. And so the, the way this program worked, if, the, if there wasn't a, a restriction like that in the lease, it shouldn't have been in the deed. But given that there were 600 plus lots that were sold in this fashion, sometimes there were mistakes. So uh, this is designed to correct that mistake. And I have a motion. I move that the board modify the first sentence only of deed restriction number four contained in the quick claim deed from the town to James F. Opst and Audrey Opst, dated February 19th, 1984, and recorded in the Rockingham County Registry of Deeds, book 2590, page 249, which now reads, the only structure permitted to be erected or placed upon said lot shall be one single family dwelling containing no more than four bedrooms with no more than a two car garage. So that said first sentence will then read, the only structure permitted to be erected or placed upon said lot will be two single family dwellings containing no more than four bedrooms each with no more than a two car garage each, leaving intact the Remainder of deed restriction number four. Said modification to be memorialized in a modification of deed registration restriction document to be drafted by the town attorney, attorney for the selectman signatures and recording. I have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Any questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. So the next one we have is a RSA 4114A217 17th Street map, lot 168, lot 78-1. And Mr. Chairman, this is a, uh, uh, the applicants here were seeking to modify two deed restrictions to enable construction of a freestanding storage building 4.5 feet from the side and rear property lines which would violate the restriction against the erection of any buildings upon the premises within seven feet of a boundary line and the restriction against the erection of buildings, outbuildings and sheds that are not connected with and attached to the dwelling house. Uh, both the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission voted not to recommend these modifications. The Conservation Commission indicated that this construction would increase the amount of impervious coverage mm -hmm. beyond the current amount which the Conservation Commission believes already exceeds the maximum percentage of 60% of impervious coverage allowed in the RA zone. Mm -hmm. I'll make that motion. We'll, we'll get a question first. Well, before you do, well, I absolutely agree with the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission. This, we can't allow people to keep cramming this on their lots and it's causing an awful problem for adjacent residences. Um, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to move to not allow that action to take place. Not well, allow I think that. if you hear the motion, uh, I have you'll, a motion. you'll be inclined to go with it. So. 
Oh, okay. You have, oh, you're reading it. Oh, okay. I have a motion to move to deny the requested okay, deed restriction good. modifications because good. the construction of a freestanding storage building within seven feet from the boundary line on this lot would result in too intense abuse of the property and is not recommended by either the Planning Board or the Conservation Commission. So you want to second that, Mary Louise? Yes, I will be okay. happy to do Very that. Very good. So we have a motion second. Any questions? All those yes. in favor? Unanimous. Here, Mark, can you put these? Now, was, old business, Mary Louise. Yeah, I have a couple for Fred. <clears throat> Fred, do you mind explaining to the public uh, the delay in, in getting the uh, Public Works Mack trucks? Because there, there are um, people questioning out there. Yeah, the, uh, the trash trucks. The trash yes. trucks, yeah. Uh, the trucks were built in the United States. Uh, the bodies that uh, go on those vehicles are built in Canada. Mm. So the trucks were built, they were sent to Canada, and because of the current change in taxation and, and uh, the other things that the president has put on for... Uh, for penalties and, 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 and so on and so tariffs. forth. Tariffs. for yeah. for property coming into the United States. Mm -hmm. It was difficult for them to get the parts to build the equipment in Canada where they're yeah. built and then put it on the vehicles. That's what's been holding this whole process up. Yeah. They have told us that they will be delivered this month. When this month, I don't know. We had suggested <laughs> that perhaps they should be coming down here and collecting our trash for us. Um, yeah. So sometime during the month of February, we're told they are built. They're going to have to go through customs. They're going to have to go through uh, cust uh, customs uh, research and so forth and pay the necessary penalties and fees because of mm -hmm. all the increase in tariffs. Yeah. So they should be here sometime this month. Because we've had a problem with equipment in public works, which has uh, held up some of the yeah. collections. Absolutely. And th I think the public needs to, uh, to know that. Yeah. And the next time we order new um, vehicles, we, we need a little better um, time frame. Well, if they're going to be ordered so that part of them is assembled outside the country, right. that's going to be a problem for us. And it's going to be a problem for everybody else in the United States. Right. So uh, I know we have a Mack dump truck uh, that is on the warrant uh, to replace one of our existing dump trucks. That's all going to be built in the United States, so we shouldn't be having a problem with that one. Good. But I, I believe, uh, while we're talking, I believe they had, they had said it was going to take quite a while to get these the two trucks back. They said back. a year anyway. It, yeah, they said it, a year anyways it, it, it when we did. ordered them. Yeah. So they, they, but they had given us a date in late November, early December for delivery. But the the changes in right have, have really posed a problem to them. It looked like they were going to be delivered at the end of December. I don't know. Don't we sign a contract or something that say they're going to get us something when we sign it for? Because I got to tell you, one, we can buy American, which is what we did this time. We don't got to deal with any of this. Mm. Okay, but we I would think that if they're going to say that we're going to sign a lease, that that's a contract. We don't have the trucks here, so I don't understand. How they can get away with it? Not my problem. They got to pay more in tax. We haven't signed anything yet until they deliver them. Oh, okay. And I have a question. <laughs> so, do we have to pay more money? No. No. Now, well, this is similar. This is happening all over the country in mm -hmm. every single yeah. business. Yeah. And uh, I'm building a house in Florida. It's going to be three months later than they've agreed to. It's uh. three months later than they agreed to with my bank. And I went to a bank around here and asked, everything around here mm -hmm. is two to three months late because of these tariffs are causing havoc everywhere. Yep. Yep. Everywhere. All yeah. the way from the steel to the houses to uh, decor of the homes, uh, light fixtures, everything is causing a problem. And if you don't already have a mortgage, you're going to pay more. Absolutely. But we're not paying anything more. Well, that's good. No additional cost. That's why I asked. Anything else in the old business? Yes. Yeah. I'm still <laughs> yep. working on it here. Um, I'm going to ask, because there have been serious drainage problems as a result of the Anne's Lane construction last fall. Um, a lot of residents in that area uh, are getting increased flooding on their properties, and that's not acceptable. Apparently, the, uh, the road was raised uh, about 15 inches higher than the old road at, on Route 1, where it joins Route 1, and then going down the slope 
uh, and east, uh, there's about an eight inch increase in the land and it is causing serious problems. What I would like to request is if Fred could kindly see that Public Works would mail a questionnaire to the residents, um, Tuck Road, Ann's Lane, uh, Philbrick, uh, Mill Road, Dearborn, all that area, and ask people to fill out the, and explain the problems they are having on their properties. We cannot pay money to put the top coat on that road and have continuing problems. And the properties right up against uh, Route 1 are having big problems. I'm getting a lot of complaints. So I'm going to ask if Public Works would kindly send out some type of brief questionnaire to abutters in that area so that we can attack the drainage problem and make sure that it's fine before we do anything else with that road. Do we? Do we have any complaints, or does Public Works have any complaints? I've received none. I don't know if Public Works has received any. Mm -hmm. What I'll do is ask them to uh, run a grade line down the street. Uh, and I'm getting that to the grade line that was run when they did the work to see where we are. I know the entire road surface is going to be taken off in the spring mm -hmm. and, and, and redone uh, because it's only a temporary road Right. Um, in, order to, in order to get it through the winter time. Right. So that road's going to come down some in the spring, uh, and, and those structures that are there are also going to come down some. So I, I'll, I'll have them run a grade line to find out where the problems are yeah. um, and see what the problems are and have that explained. Okay. Yeah. But I think it, if Public Works can reach out to that neighborhood and find out what people are complaining about. Some people already had some drainage problems, but this has apparently exacerbated it. Well, and I I'm hearing it would be from smart if people have a problem that they notify the they public are, works. Well, they are well they are complaining. I well, mean then, I'm then I'm getting the complaints. people they need to complain to is public works. Well town manager. Well put it in writing. Yes. So we know exactly what put the Put it in writing are. so they know what they can look at. Mm -hmm. I mean I've seen nothing. No one's called me, okay. no one's talked to me, no one's I'm hearing a yeah. lot. And I'm this sorry. area has had problems with the drains Drainage yes. for years. Yep. Yes. For all 15 years I've been here, there's been a yep. problem there. But we don't want to exacerbate well, it. Well, maybe it's the same problem that's been, and they've worked on it over and over again, haven't they, Mr. Welch? We put a complete new drain line Cougar down through Cogger, Cogger yeah. and, and uh, is it Tuck? Tuck. Tuck. Cogger and Tuck. Yeah. And, and we actually put a pump system in and lowered that entire drain area over there to the point where... All those basements, because most of our crawl spaces have water in them, we drain them all dry. We, we drain the whole area dry because oh, we yeah. put the pump system in. Unfortunately, this year, we've had a tad bit of rain yeah. which <laughs> instead of snow, which, is, which has caused a severe problem in some mm. areas, and it may be causing a problem yeah. here. Um, there's only so much you can do with a six-inch line. Yeah. Uh, no matter how hard you try, if you get 10 and 8 and... 15 inches of rain over a period of time yeah. over a large area and that entire area when I came here was basically underwater. Mm -hmm. um, it's always been bad. Yeah, it has been, been bad. Here. Everywhere in town is bad. Yeah. Particularly. Yeah. Well, we have to make well, sure everywhere. that that uh, in that area we have to pump it down to Mill Road and go through the back way yep. and out the back side and out out through actually out through uh the uh, Mill Pond Dam mm -hmm. out at, at um, uh, the other end of High Street right? because we can't put any more water across Route 1 in the drain system that's there because we're under a court restriction and mm. we can't do that. I think the people that live there pretty much know all that too. Yeah. Well, so I'll I see think, if I can get a list for you, Fred. Right, well, just I, I, address I just and person. Them, have them, it's, yeah, have them, them call the public yeah. works director. We that's, can't be okay. complaining for yeah. people. You know, in fact, that's, write down what their problem is, but I'm going to have them run a baseline. Mm -hmm. So we know what's there. We know what was there before they did work. We'll know what's there now, and we'll know what they have to change. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes, but the, you know, if somebody has a complaint like that, they need they need to let the public works know right it. away. Let yeah. the town manager know it right away. Yeah. Okay. And my last really quick thing, I I had in the, the <clears throat> huge pile of paperwork uh, that I picked up this morning, uh, the. Uh, picture of the stone wall and revetment and whatever it looks like north beach are we 
discussing that at all tonight because there was a big memo in, in my Seems like they dreadful that pile that I got. Down on Ocean Boulevard. It showed a walk. picture of all the rocks and mess up there. As far as the beach is concerned? Yeah, North Beach, I believe. Yeah. North Beach is a problem for us because of the broken ledge that's just offshore. Yep. And it keeps on throwing all that material up in there. We could literally, at certain times of the year, I could put a, two loaders and ten men up there just to keep it clean every day. Mm. Uh, it's a real problem. And unless the ledge goes away, which we'd like it to do, we can send that some other place. Right. Uh, it's going to continue to do that. It's a real, real problem for the folks who live up there. And we know it is. This was someone though that had reconstructed it with the ES and right. they had done more than they were authorized to do. I don't have the address. I looked at it. I saw the picture and everything. Yeah, it looks really messy. So they had done more. That's than a complaint that came through uh, and it's DES somewhere in this. and conservation. So it, we received that information. So uh, they had actually road. built a seawall and they had come in for a permit to build it right. and they built something else which was much bigger. Okay. So okay. Uh, yes. that's probably going to, that's up to conservation at this point, but you need to know that because they may decide that they have to take it down. Uh, and because the permit one, that they put up was void. One more final question for you on that state education property tax. Are we going to get together with um, SAU 90 and so forth? Uh, I've asked, suggested that we have a meeting. I've asked SAU 90 to give us their position with regards to that. That's going to cost the town of eight, about $850,000 yes. <clears> that we yes. would have to write in check form to the yeah. state of New Hampshire. Currently, that money is collected, mm. but it's left with SAU 90 yeah. to do work on their building and for education. The state would like us to take that money and send it to them. Yeah, I'm sure they would. I've had several suggestions for the state, all of Ooh. which can't be published. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, there is a bill currently pending in the legislature to order the city, every city in town in the state yeah. to do that, whatever they collect in yeah. additional state tax. So, And it was nice that we got the memo from Jane Farini in Portsmouth to give us a heads up she's, on... She's spearheading this, yes. but I will tell you that Good job. Uh, given the board's prior position, uh, the, a group of the towns met and they have voted to hire a lobbyist and pay for a lobbyist oh. in the legislature to fight this. A scary lobbyist. Well, I don't know if it's scary or not, but a lobbyist. And the board's prior position on hiring lobbyists is I'm not allowed to do that, so Ooh. you will have to consider that somehow and end up having to have an appropriation for it. Well, we can send you up there to scare them. Uh, that's not going to scare oh. them. I'm up there all the time anyhow. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know this much about it, but I believe it's been at the planning board, uh, and I've heard from other people that at where their condominiums are approved at Little Jacks, they're going to be redoing the drain there. Mm -hmm. um, well, evidently they are. I have my fingers says. crossed that that's really going to happen. And it's supposed to happen with <coughs> the state. Yep. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, speaking of uh, rainwater, the rainwater that drains off a of boar's head is unbelievable. You can yeah. see it every yeah. single time it yeah. rains. Yep. So I think it's time the town, if they're going to be doing something with that drain there, they should uh, see if there's any way that something could be uh, synchronized with the town because the town needs to put drains in that will take the water that comes off a of boar's head because it pours into the street and that's where a lot of the flooding comes from. It has nothing to do with the ocean or anything to do with the marsh. And I think in the coming year that we need to look at a Warren article that will do something about the drainage there because that's probably the worst drainage problem in the town of Hampton. Mm -hmm. that I certainly up at the top, the top two. That's and I sure. have all the uh, uh, recording videos you want to see. You can just see it pours off like a um, fountain right yeah. off of Boar's Head. It comes right over the roads. It's rainwater. And, uh, you know... It may be the right time to look at it, not so much because of even that drain there at Little Jacks, but the state is working with them, from what I hear, and the builder there, so that the, that's going to offer some something. Um, but with the build, the road going to uh, a uh, you know what is it a RFP for the road there, and that's being talked about right now. Maybe. He's, the time for us, this town, to work with the people when they do the road over. Besides, there's the, here's two different um, 
areas where the town could be working with these people that either are doing the road over or doing this drain that's definitely being done now. Uh, I see them, there, evidently there's a drain that goes underneath Little Jack's. Uh, it goes yes. right underneath the building. That's yep. being removed <clears throat> and that is going to fit at least that one drain that's there now. And path, you know, the water comes down there. Mm -hmm. it, is, it takes a lot of the water off of Boar's Head. Oh, yeah. But um, I'm not sure that that's its primary purpose. It's to take the water off the road, but the water from Boar's Head is coming into the road. Mm. So I think it's time to really investigate this and to see if there's anything we can do and maybe it will make it cheaper for the town to begin with in I'll some have, way. I'll have Public Works queue the state mm -hmm. to see what they're doing because they have not approached us yeah. at all. I'm sure they As you won't. can remember, it's what, eight years ago? Oh yeah, that's we, had, we had arranged for them to have a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers to rebuild that mm -hmm. entire system down there, a permit they said they couldn't get. Mm -hmm. And when we got it for them, they turned it down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, something's being Which done was now. not a good idea. Yeah. So now that we're talking about the state, <laughs> are we going to be talking to them at all or about what's going on? I mean, we sort of, we get all this information that we reviewed and are we going to decide what the next step's going to be? Because, I mean, I know they shoveled the, they raked away the sand the other day. I was down there. That looks very nice. State Parks guys seem to be doing a good job this winter. But yeah, drainage, huge. Yeah. contributes to flooding. Yeah. All right, if we have a drainage mm -hmm. problem over on Hens <coughs> Lane and it's flooding, there's no ocean there. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of things that we have to look at before we just start telling people that they can't save their homes. And I think we also need to get the state of New Hampshire, I don't really care if it's elected officials or state employees, in. And I don't see why they can't talk to us as a whole board. I mean, if we, they want to have a set of rules for the meeting, I'm down mm -hmm. with that. But mm -hmm. this is not something to do behind closed doors. This is affecting a lot of people in the town. And, uh, you know, 1A, the rail trail, we signed on to that. Now they're talking about how they want to put a commuter in again. So how long is it going to be the walking rail trail? Or is it going to be eventually turn into a commuter? I don't know, because no one answers these questions. They don't want to talk to us in public. Can't go up to Concord all the time. I got, you know, trying to do a lot trying to communicate, <laughs> trying to get people together. So I like, Mr. Chairman, if I may, since we're talking about the state and all their lovely agencies, I like to have on the agenda, which I just started looking at, thanks to the town manager, these transportation improvement programs that they got us lined up for. And I like to show exactly what they're expecting to give the town of the Hampton. One of these goes all the way through 2045. So if I could have that on an upcoming agenda, I would like that. No, the state isn't proposing those. Well, it's RPC. It's the Regional Planning Commission's proposing right. them. Yeah. So it would have well, to be Well, a lot RPCA. of this money is coming from the state. No. The, Federal, the, state, and the regional, other, the regional, sure the system, The system works by the Regional Planning Commission proposing things to be done that cities and towns give them, supposedly, and they then put them into a unified program, and they send them to the state for approval under the 10-year program, with additional 10 years down the road. And then if they're approved by the state, then they go into the 10 year legislation and money is appropriated for it over that 10 years. But so none of these have been approved. About $275,000 for a study on 1A that the public pretty much said they didn't want. So now they got to redo, they had to redo the whole thing over again, thanks to Senator Stiles. And um, then we have, they planned on about a $6.5 million purchase for the rail trail for the land between Seabrook, whatever it is, Portsmouth and Hampton. Okay, so that's not even all going to Hampton. And then now they're talking about having a commuter here again up in Concord. So my question is, what did we just approve? Well, I don't know, because no matter what you want to throw it in our face, whether it's the RPC or one of these other agencies, it's the state of New Hampshire that's going to make the decision. They're the ones that are going to make the deal with the federal government. So I like to have this stuff on the agenda so that we can uh, show the public exactly what they have in mind, wherever it's coming from, for the town of Hampton. And then I like to compare that to what we do for them and see if it makes sense. And I would like to mention about, there's a meeting at the Rockingham Planning Commission um, on February 13th at seven o'clock. 
and on the agenda is the Hampton B branch of the rail trail and joint use study. Also on the agenda is um, the public-private partnership commission proposal for transit center leases. And also on the agenda is the Hampton Seabrook Bridge project update. So, you know, people can go and uh, speak, I believe. Can't you speak there? Um, and it's at 7 o'clock Wednesday, February 13th. Um, the notice of the agenda in the first, uh, the, basically the Seabrook Bridge is at 810. The public-private partnership is at 820. And um, the project updates of the Hampton Rail Trail is at 835. And uh, it doesn't sound like they give much time to talk. Five minutes for everybody. <laughs> well, I have a precinct meeting at 5.30, but I can try to go to it after that. Okay. Um, Fred, did we ever get a response from Mr. Lovely Mr. Bryce on meeting with the board? It's already halfway through February. Tentatively, they've, he has agreed to come and meet with the board on the 28th, I think, which is the last... Last 25th, meeting, 25th, whatever it is. Last meeting of this month. Really? Tentatively. Tentatively? Tentatively. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see what tentatively means. Tentatively. That's the 25th. For tentatively, and that is for uh, dread, not for. Well, the former dread. Parks. Former dread, not, yeah. not for. Parks DOT. and Rec. Right. I'd like to talk about bills that we've already talked about, but I saw. Uh, these are actually bills. Are we all done with this? Or? Bills come under old business. So. All right. I would like to continue with that, what we were just talking about. All right. Um, if they decide to change that, I won't be, I'm not sure if we have a meeting at the end of March. Is there a meeting scheduled? Yes. The last Monday of March? Yes. I'm not going to be here, so if they decide to change it, I I'm would. not going to let them change it. Okay. <laughs> if they do, <laughs> let it be at the beginning of March. Right. Yeah, well, I, would like to I can tell you there. that tentatively on March 11th, which is our first meeting in the month of March, I have the Northeast Resource Recovery Association coming to talk about the recycling, international recycling oh, market, one. which we're going to be saddled with and currently are saddled with. It's getting much worse. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to have a briefing given to the board and the people in, in town to see what's going to happen to recycling over the next year or two. Mm -hmm. And if they do want to come sometime in March, we could have a special meeting for that. Yep. Oh, yeah. I, I think that it, it yeah. would be well I'm, warranted. We're gonna, we're gonna, to I'm going to try to hold them to the last Monday of this month. Okay, that's great. Huh. Just not the last Monday of the next month. Right. Thank you. Well, Jane, go ahead with that. Yeah, I'd like to talk about uh, two of, well, Representative Cushing was the prime sponsor on them, but the HB 352, which deals with money back for wastewater projects, and also the HB 497, which is would be 15% payment by the state for our retirement costs. Right. I was up in Concord on a, a school thing I'm working on with the Science and Technology Committee and when I walked out I saw Rennie there and he told me he had just gotten out of the hearings and that both bills went really well Very on the committee. Positive. So yeah. they would yeah. you know definitely uh, give back to the community so well, we got to make sure that we push those. It's House Bill 352 and House Bill 497. It's about time. Well, the state well, used to, a few times. When, when the retirement system started, the state gave us 35%. Right. right. And then they dropped it to 25, and then they dropped it to 20, and then yeah. they dropped took it away zero. altogether. Yeah. And that was that was part of their, when when the towns got into the retirement system back in the early 70s, yeah. that was their, their catch to bring everybody in. And then they failed to live up to their responsibilities. So, to do that, so they strapped it on the back of the town. It cost it's, us a fortune. Great, yes. I think it's a great bill, and I, and I applaud uh, Representative Cushing for doing it. Yeah, the, the bill in the Senate with regards to um, appropriating funds to pay us back for the last three expansions to and, and work at the wastewater treatment plant was passed unanimously by committee and recommended for adoption. Oh, nice. It also passed the House. And then the other bill that, that they're working on, too, is the uh, home rule one with uh, a local option for yep. the uh, rooms and meals. Or they're working the on that. Yep. And I think that's that's got some weight, too. So that would bring it back to the town. So all three, all, all five or six of those bills are really good. Anything else in old business? 
Seeing none, new business. Liberty Lane Sewer Association. Partial termination of hold harmless and indemnification agreement and the bill of sale and assignment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this, these uh, items here are the culmination of many months of dealing with the new developments in the Liberty Lane area and their uh, consequent additions of uh, septage flow uh, to uh, the town system. Uh, all of the septage flows through a, on the Liberty Lane area flows through a private system um, up to the point of what's called sewer manhole uh, A, a zero on the west side of uh, Route 101 and then flow, flowed through a uh, pipe and a sleeve to the, a, a sewer manhole at Langdale Drive on the east side of Route 101. Um, because of the uh, increased flow uh, that will result, the Cornerstone Healthcare Facility was going to contribute an additional 13,700 gallons per day and the hotel and office was going to contribute another 22,950 gallons per day. It was obviously as part of the planning process uh, looked into the cap capacity of the sleeve and pipe under Route 101, which by the way also had a, a water line contained in that pipe as well, which was not something that you would see built today, a water line and a sewer line in the same sleeve. and so. Um, as a result of all the proceedings that we went through that you've heard about before, um, the, a new association was created, the Liberty Lane Sewer Association, uh, to govern the entirety of the private system. And as part of these constructions, the Liberty Lane Sewer Association agreed with the town to do an upgrade of that um, pipe and sleeve under Route 101 at their cost, uh, taking out the water line and uh, putting, uh, refurbishing the sleeve and putting in a higher capacity sewer pipe, which would account not only for uh, the increases of the, at the Liberty Lane area, but also potentially to allow uh, increased flows uh, for other development west of Route 101. And so the two items that are before you tonight for acceptance are the bill of sale from the Liberty Lane Sewer Association of the new sewer connection under Route 101, uh, as well as a part of that same document is an assignment of the one-year warranty from the builder of that, uh, that sleeve and pipe, the standard one-year warranty that we get with our construction projects. And so that's a bill of sale that's up for board acceptance. And also as a result, uh, what we have already is a, um, um, a hold harmless and indemnification agreement where the town is indemnified for any problems uh, that are part of that private sewer system west of Route 101 in Liberty Lane. And uh, previously that hold harmless agreement covered the pipe under Route 101 because it did not belong to the town. But now that we're being given a bill of sale, we're uh, releasing uh, the association from uh, that partial uh, area that we're now getting the bill of sale for. So I have a, a proposed motion for that. And that was all done by town specs and approved by Public Works and that's correct. And inspected by Public Works as they as they yep. did the work. Absolutely. I'll make that motion. I move to accept the bill of sale from the Liberty Lane Sewer Association of the new sewer connection and to sign the partial termination and partial release of whole harmless an indemnification agreement as drafted by the town council. I'll second for discussion. Go ahead. Mark, it took you quite some time to uh, get all these documents in order and have everyone agree to them. I'd say it was probably closer to a year than it was months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably closer <laughs> to two years. Yeah, there, so. there, there was a, uh, these last two documents uh, are basically being added to a set that's about yay thick of documents that were recorded uh, for the remainder, yes. So I just wanted to thank you, and you've made sure that you know the town will not be responsible for these lines as they are not ours. So 
Thank, thank you very you. much. And, and I would thank, as, as we go along, uh, Public Works in particular was instrumental in uh, helping to, uh, to give meaning to a lot of the words. Very good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I can't really tell. I'm not very good at reading maps. But the original line was put in when George Hardart was the Public Works Director. And that's going way back. And I forget the name of the company that was down at the end there. But that was basically uh, private sewer. The problem was when it got to the, the turnoff, you had, as, as Mark mentioned, the sewer line and the water line too close together. Who owns that water line? Of that, the particular water line that was in the same sleeve as the right. sewer line has now been removed. That was obviously as a aquarium. But Aquarian took that totally out. Totally out. So they don't need a water line going down there anymore to 101 or whatever. Not, not it, it isn't being piped through that location. Control, okay. Control it's going a different direction. Central. So we don't have a problem with two, Correct. with the two adjacent to each other so close. That's correct. Now, if, if other people start coming in from the west side of town wanting to join in this sewer line, what happens? Well, obviously, uh, any new uh, hookups would be paying a fee for that privilege. And that we would have a charge for that. And it would remain a private sewer association? Yes. Uh, to the extent that they, however, they're in, they input to our system. They input mm -hmm. to the town system, ultimately, mm -hmm. even though they, they run through mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, private system. But we, we've also made provision in amongst those big set of documents so that the town has an easement over Liberty Lane property, whereby if it were found necessary for the town to expand its capacity, mm -hmm. we have the, an easement to build a, a line uh, okay. to get to the same sewer manhole zero that's now ours. Yeah, because beyond CRs and the um, hotel and all that stuff, that's potential for tremendous <clears throat> development. Once you get over 95. Westbound, yes. And so so we should be okay with, because that, that's not addressing extra stuff going into the treatment plant, which it might or might not be able to take. Correct. But we're, we're covered right now by that private association right. and, okay. and as I say the pipe that was the sewer line that was going through that sleeve before has been upsized to account okay. for future growth and the water's gone the water line's gone okay good thank you that I don't envy you that was a complicated pain in the neck thank you all right so I have a motion and a second all those in favor unanimous there's one there on the top Outside. Thank you, Mark, because that was pretty much. sticky. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yes. Next thing we have is 236 Winnicott Road, a request to name Loy a drive and a road bond acceptance for 607 469. Uh, Mr. That Chairman, I've changed. Yeah. Okay. That's right. It's now 649379. What? Okay. what are we doing? <clears throat> I'll make that motion. Okay, and there was some question as to why this was, or he, he made the motion to, to uh, accept the Loy Drive and the, the road bond for the amended price. Two thirty-six. Second. Second for discussion. All right, the, there was some question on Loy Drive. Loy Drive is named after Desiree Loy. Yeah. Desiree Loy was an airman that was uh, right. actually in my class in 76, 77, and uh, she died, and so because she was a, an airman, uh, we, we decided to name it after her. She was added to the list, right? Yes. right. So, any que do you have any questions? I, I, oh, okay, go ahead. I object to this development. There's a 1790 home on there that's going to be destroyed. They're going to have their little gardens. It's a very wet area, and I think it's a disgrace that that was approved, and I want nothing to do with it. Okay. I don't have anything. All right. 
so we have a motion and a second. All those to accept the, the road bond acceptance in the Desiree Lloyd Drive. Raise your hand. Those opposed? 3 1. Thank you very much. Okay. Any closing comments? <laughs> I hereby move that we go into a oh. non public Whoop. session. Actually, before we do that, I just want to tell the board one thing and make an announcement that sure, I forgot about. Um, on Thursday, Thursday the, uh, February 21st at the library, I'm not sure on the time I'll. I'll have to find out, but there's going to be a panel discussion on uh, the devil we know, which is about all this PFAS in the water. I was uh, speaking with Mindy Mesmer the other day, and I actually have been asked to be the moderator for it. So once I get more information, well, it will be fun. It's a good, it's a good topic to do. To so learn once more I about. get more information, I'll send it off to the chairman and the town manager so that you guys Absolutely. can get the word out. Yeah, she's got it all on okay. Facebook, too, and she's really, really telling a lot about it. Right. That's, That's it. February 13th? It's the 21st. I'm sorry. Thursday the 21st. And uh, where and when? It's at the Lane, Lane Library, and I don't know the time offhand. And on Facebook, there's about five to seven other areas that you could go if you couldn't go that night. Right. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, the and speaking of the library, uh, I did notice on Channel 22 that they have a little message up there from the SPCA, and I love the SPCA, and you can drop off donations of to uh, towels or uh, throws or uh, bedding leashes, material. bedding material, all sorts of stuff. I brought three bags over this morning, and I hope that people will uh, donate to the, um, and you can read the description of what they need on Channel 22, but uh, the uh, SPCA in Stratum is very close to my heart, so. So how many, what type of towels do they want? Any type of I, towels, for, for washing the dogs and. Yeah, because I have yeah. so many towels, I've been saving them for something. I didn't yeah, I, I, had, I did too. three big bags today, yeah. And they, right, since my daughter died, you know, the linen closet, could use a little cleaning, so I took it out. Some of the towels are older, but they're you can use them, yep. and if there's uh, that's a good way to um, to help yes, over Absolutely. in Stratum, and it saved me a trip over. No, I'm still oh. signing, Fred. I know you are. Here, I've got already. So more. okay, I'll make a motion that we hereby go into a non-public session to discuss only pending or threatened litigations under RSA. R RSA 91A 32E. Second. Second. All those in favor, roll call. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Channel 22.